listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hello and welcome to Six Figure Dog Business. I'm your host, Ty Brown of SixFigureDogBusiness.com. Now, this is the show where we teach you how to start or grow your dog-related business to a healthy six-figure per year income. Now, today's show is a continuation. In our last episode, we were talking about how to create the perfect ad. There just got to be too much stuff that I had to break it up into two different episodes. And so today is a continuation. So stick right with us. We're going to come back with some great information on how to make sure that your ads get you the most dollars in your pocket. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Petco. Where the pets go. Petco. Where the pets go. Pet Life Radio has tail wagging, fur flying, fabulous deals for our listeners from Petco. Get $6 off your order of $60 or more and up to 40% off the entire Petco site. That's right. But that's not all. Because you're a Pet Life Radio listener, you'll also get free shipping on your order of $49 or more. $6 off, up to 40% off, and free shipping from Pet Life Radio and Petco. To get these, awesome deals go to petcodeals.com that's petcodeals.com petco where the pets go welcome to godaddy.com's internet cloud first get your domain name from godaddy.com then make your business and personal internet dreams come true go to godaddy.com use promo code sfdb101 Get a .com domain name for just $7.49. SFDB102 for 10% off your order. SFDB103 for $5 off $30 or more on any items. Or SFDB104 for 20% off one-year hosting plan. GoDaddy.com. Domains, websites, and everything in between. This year, Americans are expected to spend a jaw-dropping $36 billion on their pets. From lighted leashes to high-end spa products, the discriminating pet owner can find just about anything to pamper his or her pet. Hi, this is Michelle Fern. Join me every week for Best Bets for Pets, where we'll talk about the latest pet products and talk to the companies that make them. Best Bets for Pets, every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Okay, we're back. And uh, if you haven't listened to our previous episode on advertising, please do. You know, don't jump ahead because I'm actually in the middle of an entire thought here. And so if you listen to me starting right now... You're going to get lost. And so in our last episode, I finished up talking about how to craft an offer so that your prospects call you and talk to you and, you know, actually are, are motivated to pick up the phone or get on the website or what have you and, uh, and use your service. And so the fourth step of having the perfect message, and as just as a quick review, step one was the right headline. Step two is the right copy. Step three is the right offer. Step four is urgency. Don't just give them a way to get in touch. Give them a reason to get in touch. Give them a reason to do it right now. Don't wait till tomorrow, folks. Build some urgency. Offer expires on this date. Limited supplies. Only 25 available at this price, etc. I mean, those are just some examples of things that you can put into your ad. But many people need a push to act, and you need to build that urgency. One of the biggest mistakes I see is, you know, people just put it out there that, hey, we've got this service. We hope you come visit us. Forget that. You know, give them a great offer and give them the urgency to do it right now. Your job here is to get money into your pocket. Your job here is to recoup the investment that you just put out in buying the advertising in the first place. 
So don't put the ad out there and hope that one day they visit. Give them a reason to visit your site, call your number, come to your store, whatever, and give them a reason to do it right now. The fifth thing I want to talk about is a bonus. Offering a limited time bonus, now this kind of goes hand in hand with urgency, but offering a limited time bonus only helps build the urgency even more. It's also a way to upsell. You know, for example, a dog walker could offer a limited time bonus of 10 days walking for the price of eight, and that expires on this date. And so there's the urgency plus a bonus, plus an offer. You could offer a limited number of books, you know, as a free gift for coming in right now. And, you know, a book, you could get a book really cheap and give it away as an added gift. You could offer a bonus of a free bottle of shampoo if you're a dog groomer. You know, if you're a veterinarian or a veterinarian office, you could offer free nail clipping and anal gland expressing, you know, if they come in this week, you know. And so add a bonus. You know, you know, for example, here at our company, we recently ran an ad, a direct mail piece that we sent out. And the bonus was that customers would get access to our membership website for a year at no cost if they took us up on this offer. Now, it cost us nothing to give this access. It takes five minutes to set that up. Yet many of the clients mentioned that it was the main reason that they bought the offer. And so it was a bonus that took, you know, no real effort or or money on our part, but resulted in a much higher response than we would have gotten without it. And so what's something like that that you could do? I've mentioned some things that cost money. Like I say, if you were to give away a book or, or shampoo... You know, that's going to cost you money. But, you know, think about it. A bottle of shampoo is going to cost you four or five dollars. Hey, is it worth four or five dollars to get a customer? If you're a groomer, that might be giving you fifty dollars a month, you know, for the next four years. You know, that's that's twenty four hundred dollars. I'll give five dollars to get twenty four hundred dollars back any day of the week. And so think about a bonus that is valuable to your customers that uh, isn't going to take too much off of your bottom line, if anything. The number six thing that I want to point out is what I call a reply mechanism. That's a fancy way of saying, what do you want your prospects to do? Do you want them to call you? Do you want them to come in this weekend? Do you want them to register at this phone number? Do you want them to visit this website? You need to push them in a direction, and this is where you can also track your effectiveness. Now, I had mentioned this in the first episode that uh, one of the main things you need to do with your advertising is make sure you're tracking how effective it is. If you're not tracking how effective it is, you could be making some huge mistakes. And um, a lot of business owners, unfortunately, are. And so uh, let's think in our minds, for example, let's take 10 business owners who advertise and ask them about their most recent ad campaign. You know, ask them how much they spent advertising. They probably know that. How much money was returned to them as a direct result? They probably don't know that. How many do you think out of 10 would know the answer to that question? I'd guess that it's maybe zero. You know, maybe one. I doubt it'd even be two. Let's even ask the next question. How many of those 10 business owners even thought about it? You know, how many of them, as they were writing that check for that advertising piece, thought, okay, I need to make sure it brings in this amount of money, or boy, I hope it brings in this amount of money, or even thought about it as they were writing that check? But think about it. How much sense does that make if you're making an investment and you have no idea how much money you made or lost? And so, you know, take, for example, if do you invest in mutual funds or do you invest in stocks? I mean, do you ever, I mean, have you ever been plunking money into something for months or years and, and someone says, wow, you've been investing in the stocks for a while. How much money have you made? And you're like, I don't know. I don't even know if I've lost it. I might have lost it. I might have made some. I have no idea. You know, how ridiculous does that sound that someone would spend all that money investing in the stock market and have no idea what it did for them? Well, that's what most business owners do with their advertising. You know, they have no idea how effective their advertising has been, and so they have no way of knowing, are they making money or losing money? And so, let me give you a number of ways you can track the effectiveness of your ads. One thing that we do a lot at our company here is we use toll-free numbers. Personally, the company that I use is a company called Call8.com, and I have no relationship with them, so if you use them, I don't make any money. It's just the one that I use, and it's K-A-L-L, the number 8.com, so Call8.com. And so the reason why I use it is because for very cheap, you can get a toll-free number. You can set it up to go to voicemail. You can redirect it towards your your business line, your cell phone, etc. And so for each campaign we do, we set up a number just for that campaign. And I believe it's like $2 a month. And so if you can't afford $2 a month, you might you know, might want to consider whether or not you should be in business. But it's $2 a month plus minutes. But uh, it's money well spent. It allows me to track the ROI. You know, for example, on our last uh, mailer, you know, our last mailer that we mailed out to 1,000 homes, you know, it, there was a toll-free number on that piece of mail that went out. 
And so every call that came in, we knew exactly where it came from. You know, it came from that mailer. Couldn't have come from anywhere else. And uh, we were able to you know, track, okay, we had this many calls that resulted in this many sales. The advertising cost us this much. Okay, we made, we lost money. In that case, we're still waiting to see. This is just about a week old that we mailed it out. But in any case, I'm able to track that because I attached it to something that is trackable. Now, you can do the same thing with a special email address. You can do the same thing with a specific landing page. That's one that we've done a lot. You know, for example, you know, on a mailer we've sent out before in the past, you know, we've had them go to communicate9.net backslash, you know, special offer or whatever. And so we track the leads that come in through those pages. And so you can do something like put a name in the ad for someone that doesn't even exist. You know, maybe that sounds sneaky, but it's, I don't think it's unethical. You could say, call Martha to get your deal. And then you can track how many people call for Martha. And the next time you run a different ad, call Susan. And the next time you run, you know, and so you can track how many people call for that person. Now, of course, when somebody calls for Martha, you know, Martha's never available, but you're happy to help out when they call. And so it's just another way for you to track because the worst thing you can do is keep pumping money into something and you're you're not getting any calls. You're not getting any visitors to your site or what have you. Now, as far as your reply mechanism goes, I also want you to think in terms of being very simple here. You know, too many times people are inundated. You know, if you read an ad, it's call this number or visit this Twitter page or go to this on Facebook or email us here or go to this website. And there's six or seven different ways and it all gets muddled up. One, maybe two. You know, in most of the cases we do, we do one. You know, we either send them to a website, you know, and maybe it's a page on our website, or maybe it's a whole different website set up just for this reason, which is simple to do, or we send them to a phone number. Occasionally, we'll do both. You know, we'll have a phone number and a website, but again, you don't want to get too crazy and too much on there because you just confuse the person. You confuse the customer, and they're not in really a great position to make any choice. You know, they just get muddled down with all too much information, and so... Like I say, you know, uh, step number six, have a reply mechanism that you can check and that you can track. Now, lastly, a great ad is going to offer a guarantee. Let me ask you, do you offer a guarantee? And if the answer is no, then let me ask you, why not? A guarantee is a great way to have you take all of the risk. You know, think about it. Most companies ask their clients to share the risk. They say, you know, come spend money with us. And it's a risk because if you, you know, essentially this is what they're saying. This wouldn't be good to put on an ad. <laughs> but, you know, they say something to the effect of, hey, come spend money with us, and it's a risk because if you don't like it, sorry, you know, that's the deal. Hey, come to our grooming shop. And, you know, the idea is in the back of the person said, what if they're a lousy groomer? Hey, come use our dog training service. What if they're a lousy dog trainer? Hey, you know, come do this, come do that. Well, what if they're not good, you know? And so subliminally, the person realizes they're sharing the risk by taking advantage of the offer. And so... You need to be thinking in terms of what do you guarantee, what kind of guarantee can you offer them so that you take all of the risk instead of sharing it and make it so much easier for them to take their wallet out of their pocket and invest in you and invest in your solution. For example, you know, here in my company, we offer, at my training company, we offer a 45-day money-back guarantee to our customers on training. So they can try us out. They can use us. You know, they can have several sessions within that 45 days and still get their money back if they don't like what we're doing. Now, we even go further than that. We actually, you know, if they go beyond that 45 days and they do the whole program with us and they decide, boy, our dog's not as good as we thought he'd be, we work with them, you know, more for free. Now, I've heard people say that my guarantee is crazy because, oh my gosh, can you imagine going to someone's house for three dog training sessions and they ask for their money back? I couldn't afford that. Or, you know, um, can you imagine how much people are going to abuse that? Well, here's the truth that uh, most people aren't cheats. Most people are good. Most people, for the most part, are honest. In fact, in all of our years of doing this, we've never had a request for money back. Now, let me tell you this, we bust our butts to make sure that we're giving, you know, our customers the absolute best service that we possibly can, you know, and so we're doing everything so that they're happy, but at the same time, you know, we've had customers that aren't the best customers in the world, but, you know, they don't follow through on their dog training, they, you know, they don't get the best results because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and they realize that, and so we've never had somebody ask for their money back. We have had a handful of people, you know, who go through the whole program and their dogs aren't quite as good as they should be, and we'll work with them extra for free. We follow through on our guarantee. Um, it's not a big deal because it's very, you know, it's maybe a percent or two of our clients, and so it's not that often, and, and so it doesn't hurt us every now and then to do a little bit of extra training. But 
it takes the risk away from our clients. And so, especially us who we're selling a big ticket training, you know, where our training is $1,500, $2,000, $3,000, it makes it so much easier for them to invest that if they know that they've got that safety net there. Now, you might be the dog walker who's charging 20 bucks and say, well, they don't need a safety net for 20 bucks. Well, people do. You know, people think about 20 bucks sometimes the same way they think about a thousand. And so, what kind of guarantee can you offer your folks? that, you know, isn't going to be so easy to abuse, but is also going to make you stand out and make it so easy for them to take advantage of your offer. And so, now, I want to take a quick break here. When we come back, I'm going to explain to you the different types of advertising that's typically available to us as pet business owners and what ones you might want to use and what ones you might not. So, stay right with us. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Every pet is unique. Maybe they're gray in the muzzle, yet young at heart. Maybe they're growing out of the puppy stage and into their paws and ears. Or maybe they're just trying to maintain a more girlish figure. At PetSmart... We have the right food for your pet at a great value for you. PetSmart. Be better together. Go to PetSmartDeal.com and save up to 30% on possum gifts for the pets and pet people in your life. Toys, collars, leashes, PetSmart gift cards, treats, and more. Go to PetSmartDeal.com today. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. I don't make any decisions about who to hire without going to Angie's List first. You'll find reviews on home repair to health care written by people just like you. With Angie's List, I know who to call and I know the results will be fantastic. Angie's List, who you can trust. Go to Angie'sList.com forward slash best and get 25% off any subscription. That's Angie'sList.com forward slash best, B-E-S-T. I'm not much of a reader, but I do wish I were more well-read. There are so many great books coming out. I wish I could find a way to keep up. Audible.com makes it easy to stay well-informed and catch up on your reading simply by listening. Audiobooks from Audible turn downtime into uptime. You'll be more productive and become well-read. Now I'm able to catch up on all the great books I've been wanting to read. With Audible, I feel smarter. Pet Life Radio listeners, try audible.com now and get your first 30 days of Audible Listener Gold Membership plan free. And get a free audiobook. Choose from over 100,000 titles. To get this great deal, go to audibledeals.com. That's audibledeals.com. Passengers, please fasten your seatbelts, put your seat bags and sleeping pets in their full upright position, and prepare for takeoff. Pet Life Radio presents Travel Tales, the show where you'll get great travel ideas on perfect places for you and your pet. From Paris to paradise, south of the border to the South Seas, Travel Tales will give you cool tips on fun vacation destinations to travel with your pet, pet friendly hotels, and advice on how to travel safely and happily with your furry best friends. So, get ready to pack the bags and the bones with your Travel Tales hosts, Susan Sims and Nicholas Veslowski, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet Okay, and we're back, and I wanted to real quick just do a quick review before I get into the next section here on what I wanted to talk about, because I'm just realizing just how important this crafting the right message is. And so let me review the steps, and if you hadn't been taking notes up until this point, take some now. At least get these steps down so you can think about them. Number one. Have a headline that's benefit-driven that gets somebody's attention. Number two, have copy that tells more so that you can sell more. Have copy that educates and communicates benefits, not just features. 
Number three, come up with an offer that's compelling, you know, that's interesting, that is hard to resist. Number four, have some urgency built into your message, you know, so that people take action now and don't lollygag and don't sit on the fence, but take action now. Number five, what kind of bonus can you offer so that people are, are really enticed to take action now? Number six, Think about your reply mechanism, how you want people to reply to your ad, and how you can track that. And lastly, think about what kind of guarantee you can put in your message. Now, I want to spend this next section talking about the different types of advertising that's typically available. Now, obviously, I can't cover everything, but I'm going to cover here what I think are the most popular mediums, the most readily available to us as pet business owners. And so, first thing I want to talk about is direct mail. Now, direct mail is sending out postcards and letters and things like that. Now, I hear a lot of people say direct mail is dead. No one reads their mail anymore. People just throw it away. And to those people, I say, you're right. And I say you're right so that they don't do it because we do direct mail and it's profitable. Now, why is it profitable? Number one, it's profitable because we follow the message formula, you know, where we've got a message and we've got good copy and we've got an offer and we've got bonus and we've got urgency and we've got all that good stuff. A lot of direct mail that's done is just kind of done in a bad way. You know, it's, there's no offer, there's no urgency. And so we follow the formula well when we do it. But direct mail has a lot of pros to it. You can target certain groups or certain zones. Let me give you a couple resources here. InfoUSA.com is a database. And so you can go into InfoUSA.com and you can rent a list of pet owners in your area. And there's other list brokers out there. InfoUSA is just one of the bigger ones. In fact, little hint here, there's a lot of libraries, depending on the state that you live in, a lot of libraries have free access to InfoUSA.com. It's usually a smaller version, so you can't get tons of leads. You have to go back several days in a row. But InfoUSA.com is a great resource. And so you can go in there, get a mailing list together and mail out to people. And so you can target, like I say, certain groups, certain zones using InfoUSA.com. And so you can really get down to the type of people that you're interested in talking to. It's easy to measure your response on direct mail. Like I say, you can just put something in there so that it's easy to measure who's responding as a result of your mail, you know, whether it's a 800 number or, you know, a website or what have you. You can even personalize your mailings. That's something we've never done, but that is a pro that uh, if you have the right list and the right software, you can even, you know, get it printed out so that it's addressed to each person, each prospect individually. Now, as far as cons, sometimes mailing lists can be inaccurate. They're not always up to date. As of late, mailing and printing costs have been going up, and so that's obviously a con. Now, response rate is also low. You know, a, a typical response rate for a good piece is 1% to 2%, meaning, you know, if you send out 100, you get one or two leads out of that. If you send out 1,000, it's, you know, 10, you know, is considered a good response. And so that's why it's important to make sure your message is perfect so that it pays off. And so it does take a lot of prep as well. That's another con. Let me give you one more resource as it comes to direct mail that we've been experimenting with lately with some good results. It's a program that the post office does. It's called Every Door Direct. And basically what it is, and so just go on Google and do a search for Every Door Direct U.S. Post Office or something like that, and you'll find what I'm talking about. But what it is, it's a program where you can choose a zip code and you can just send a piece of mail to every person in that zip code, but it's really cheap. And so... You know, the postage is something like 14.2 cents per household. And so it's very cheap. And so, yes, it is spray and pray. And yes, I did advise you a little bit against that. But it's cheap enough that, uh, you know, you may want to consider doing it because you're going to get your message out there to a lot of people. And, you know, we do know that about half of households are going to have dogs. Or not quite half, but close to half are going to have dogs. And so, you know, so the chances are pretty decent that if you're a dog-related business that you're going to be getting, you know, with a 1,000, you're going to be getting 400 of those into the hand of dog owners. And so every door direct, infousa.com, those are a couple good resources if you're wanting to do direct mail. Now, as far as another piece of direct mail that you could do is Valpac, Money Mailer, you know, one of these group mailers. Now, the pros here is it's a shared cost, so it's much cheaper. You know, you can get out your message out there to a lot more people at a much cheaper rate. Again, it's easy to measure response on this, now, but the cons are you're at the mercy of where they're going to be mailing to. And it's not targeted at all. Like, if you wanted to just get to pet owners, 
you can do that through Info USA. And so, you know, you could send out, instead of 10,000 money mailers, you could send out 3,000, you know, through Info USA, and you know that they're all getting to pet owners, where you send out 10,000 with Valpac, and who knows how many you're going to get to pet owners. There is a low response with these mailers as well, because there's a lot of ad clutter. You know, a typical money mailer or Valpac is going to have dozens of ads, and so yours could easily get lost in the shuffle. The next thing I want to talk about are magazines. Most communities are going to have some sort of local magazine. You know, here in uh, in my area, here in Salt Lake, we've got a great Salt Lake magazine, very professional, very prestigious. You know, and we've got other ones that are good magazines as well. But depending on where you are, you're probably going to have one, if not many, choices of magazines. In fact, in some areas, you're going to have the ability to advertise in pet-related magazines. My community, we don't have any pet-related magazines, but a lot of communities do. Now, the pros, you can make a very visually appealing ad you know you can do big headlines and bold colors and things like that and you typically in a magazine you're going to get space for editorial content you can write some good copy if you're doing a magazine ad also with magazines you know the pros are that you can target certain demographics and so go to any magazine and they should be able to tell you who their readership is how old their readership is how much money their readership makes, what kind of education their readership has, and if it matches with the demographic that you typically work with, hey, it might be a good match. And so that's a big pro is you can really get your message in front of your, you know, the type of people you're looking to target. Now the cons are, again, due to ad clutter, there's typically a low response. You know, it's very possible for someone to read a magazine and never even see your ad. There's also a lot of prep time, a lot of lead time, and it's getting costlier and costlier to run ads in magazines. Next thing is magazine's brother, newspapers. Newspapers, the pros are they reach a mass audience. You can specify the section you want. You know, you can put it in the home and life section. You know, you can specify where you want your ad. You know, you can be flexible. You know, if you're running a, an ad in a daily newspaper, you can change it out, you know, if it's not working. Whereas a magazine, you can't really do that. And there's many newspapers that even have low-cost ad options. And a lot of newspapers, just being a newspaper, they carry credibility. And so that's a pro in your favor. Now, cons are that readership is way down. In fact, in advertising in newspapers, you can quite often miss the entire demographic of people that are under 39. And in fact, as far as that goes, costs have actually been going up. You know, newspapers are in big trouble. And so they're actually charging more on a national level. They're charging more for their rates, even though circulation is going down. So it's not always the most cost effective. But again, you know, if you're looking to reach a mass audience and you can get in the right section, it could be for you. Radio. Now, you can reach customers. The benefits here, you can reach customers in many areas, their car, their work, their home. You know, I don't know if you know this, but the average person listens to three or more hours of radio per day. Also, like with magazines, you can target your customers. You know, they know a lot about their demographics. Each radio station does. And so you're in a good position to find the right station that's already, you know, playing music for your type of customers. Cons are, you know, the audience is getting more fragmented because there's a lot more radio stations today than there was before. You can't really demonstrate or show any sort of product or service onto the radio. It's all, you know, audio. You got really short time limits to make your pitch, 30 seconds, maybe 60 seconds, depending on which type of ad you buy. And another con is people sometimes have a hard time remembering key details. So make sure that there's just one call to action in a radio spot. It's not go to this website and call this number. It's call this number. It's this website, one or the other, not both. Make it very easy for them to remember. Next thing I want to talk about, Yellow Pages. You know, the pros are you can reach customers who are ready to buy. Think about it. When people go to the Yellow Pages, they're, you know, they're about ready to make their purchase. You know, they're not just browsing around for fun. And so, you know, customers are typically ready to buy when they're in the Yellow Pages. You can fit a lot into an ad. You know, you can write some good copy. And you have high penetration. You know, most homes have yellow pages, and so there's good penetration. Cons are people are using them less and less, and they're using the Internet much more. Cons are you can only change your ad once a year. The other cons are, like I mentioned before, it's all advertisement. So people aren't there for other stuff. You know, there's nothing to catch somebody's attention. You know, they see your ad or they don't, but then they're gone. And so those are the cons. The last thing I want to talk about here are online ads. And I'm talking specifically about, like, Google ads and things like that, ad networks. Pros are you can get going quickly. You can get something going today, and you can start getting people to your website and leads today, you know, whereas I don't know of any other ad medium that you can do that in. Done right, it can be very cost-effective. You can target specific areas, specific keywords, so you can really 
target down, even down to the time of day that your ads run. And so it's a very good way to really only be speaking to your target audience. Now the cons are it's very difficult to learn how to do it well and it can be pricey if even if you're off just a little bit. And so I've gone into detail here and I hope you're taking notes and I hope you're kind of trying to realize what the pros and cons are. The reality is I've used most of those styles of advertising throughout my training career and I found that some of them have worked better for me and others have not worked better for me. And the only way to find that out is through testing. Now the beauty of testing is that you can then scale if something's working well. And so I mentioned, you know, let's say you've got this one ad and you run it this one way. Let's say it's a postcard that you send out to this type of person. And you send out, you know, a thousand dollars worth of postcards and you get back four thousand dollars worth of business. Hey, that's a pretty good return. Well, what if you want to make a little bit more money next month? Why not put out fifteen hundred dollars worth of postcards two thousand dollars worth of postcards if it's working and you can test it and prove it then you can start scaling it up and that's a way that you can grow your business fairly quickly is by finding an advertising medium that works for you and predictably works for you and so folks I've given you a very large brain dump over these last two episodes I shared with you how to craft the right message where you can be putting your message you know I have shared with you just a whole host of things on how to think about advertising. The things I hear the most that frustrates me the most is people say, oh, that advertising doesn't work. Or I hear people say, advertising period doesn't work. And what they're really saying is, I've tried advertising and it didn't work for me. Well, you can't say that because advertising obviously does work or companies wouldn't keep doing it. So advertising does work, they were just doing it wrong. You know, think how ridiculous it would sound if I said, boy, I'm on a diet but it's just not working. And someone's like, oh, well, what are you doing? Well, I eat a pizza every night religiously. And every night I have an ice cream sundae. And every morning I have bacon and, and sausage. And I'm doing every single day, I'm doing this diet. Well, guys, if the technique is off, it doesn't matter how consistent you are or what you, you know, it's just not going to work. And so that's how so many people have done advertising. They did it wrong. And now they're saying, ah, oh, it doesn't work. And so as business owners, we need to be looking for every edge that we can find. We need to be looking for every unique thing that we can be doing. And advertising is one great way where we can test our message. We can test our USP and test who we are to the marketplace and see what the marketplace thinks of us in terms of voting with their wallet. So I hope that you've taken some notes. And if you haven't, go back and listen to this again. I want you to really internalize this information and start to see some big results from your ad campaigns and the ads that you're running with your business. So if you're looking for any other information, just head to PetLifeRadio.com and go to Six Figure Dog Business. If you have any questions for me, email me at Ty at PetLifeRadio.com or visit my website, SixFigureDogBusiness.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.